Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, YouTube. What is up, everybody? This is Ruben, and I am back again with another Ruben Report. Today, I'm going to be doing another UET update, Ultimate Endurance Test update. And um, from my last video, or the last update, I really didn't have the chance or the time to really go in depth uh, about what's been going on and different things <laughs> uh, that are changing and there's been a couple changes um, that I would like to talk about but before we get started on any of those topics or dive deeper in any of those topics um, we're gonna start with the mileage as we always do so here we go one moment here so we are currently at 4,802.1 miles. Okay. Okay, so with that mileage reading, we are currently at 2,528.8 miles on the new engine. And we are currently at 382 miles on the new valve adjustment. And I'd like to talk about that a little bit more in detail here in just a moment. So from my last video, um, again, I, I wasn't able to go very much in detail because I didn't have time um, knowing that I had to take the bike apart and do a valve adjustment. But um, let me just talk about what went wrong. Um, from the day before, uh, I was getting footage for you guys or wanting to get footage for you guys uh, so that way it wouldn't be a boring video to show another top speed test um, generally to, con to constantly monitor uh, the top end performance of the bike along with the MPG performance and many other different things that I was constantly monitoring to ensure that the valves well weren't moving <laughs> and uh, that day, um, I did, I did experience uh, the valves um, slightly move. Uh, we saw a decrease in top performance uh, by about six miles. Instead of hitting 80, I hit a 74. Um, I saw a decrease in MPG performance by about two to three MPG, which is what I would have. That's what I would have um, anticipated. I would have anticipated to have gotten about 56, maybe even 57 MPG for the run that I was doing that day, but I actually got 53, so really three or four MPG um, difference there. And uh, then on the ride back home, because generally every time that I have done a top speed test or just a brief top speed pull it's always been in the morning time when it's pretty much optimum circumstances where it's like 50 to 60 degrees out it's not very hot a lot of cold air and the bike has quite a bit of time to get up to that particular top speed and not be you know overloaded too much um, riding back home um, that particular day uh, was obviously about 90 something degrees out almost 100 degrees and uh, definitely saw a lot more um, performance issues on the way back home I was hitting about maximum indicated 75 and uh, indicated 75 not a GPS 75 that was, so indicated 75 we've, we've, we've seen my top speed test Indicator 75 is about a GPS 69. So we definitely got the bike back, um, took it apart, saw that the exhaust valves were stuck a bit, or were they weren't completely closed and they weren't completely tight. They just moved a tiny, tiny bit. Uh, my, my original um, measurement of 0 0.076 millimeter um, was snagging quite a bit and if you actually go back to that video and you turn up the volume you can hear it snagging as well so we adjusted it we got it back into spec and so far 
on the new valve adjustment, we have 382 miles on the new valve adjustment. Okay? So that means that the old valve adjustment or the first valve adjustment that we have done, it only lasted 1644 miles. That is quite a far off from the claimed 5,000 mile uh, valve adjustment interval. Now, um, as far as my riding is concerned, or actually before I go into that, uh, I also, I'd, I'd also want to mention, um, since I've done this new valve adjustment, uh, the bike's been running great. Uh, my best MPG so far has been 58.6. So it's definitely within the range of the expected MPG performance. The lowest I've gotten was mid 54 and that was quite a bit of aggressive riding, passing up a lot of trucks that particular day. Um, mind you, um, since that valve adjustment and since last video, I've, I've let you guys know, I don't ride the highway anymore. I ride you know, strictly the back roads mainly because of safety concerns um, there was I think it was literally the day right after I kind of declared that I was going to be testing the highway that I, I had like two sorry about that guys my video abruptly cut off my phone showed me a message that it was overheating so I went ahead and brought the bike back into the garage where it's a little cooler and we'll just continue the video in here so that way I don't have my phone cut off from uh, heat. Uh, anyway, as I was saying, um, there I had two near, uh, like close call uh, incidences while I was riding on the highway. One was with debris being in the road and another with a driver that just wasn't paying attention. I mean, I purposefully wear highlighter green uh, jacket all the time um, to increase my visibility as much as possible, but for some reason motorcyclists are still invisible to cagers. So um, that was enough for me. Uh, I, I kind of initially stated that in my what was it, the UET update video number three. I, I knew that that was going to be one of the risks and seeing it firsthand, um, that is a risk that I'm not willing to take, I'm not willing to deal with either. So back to the back roads from me. Um, so ever since that one day, <laughs> uh, I have been riding on the back roads strictly once again. Okay. So um, knowing that the valve adjustment lasted as long as it lasted, I kind of want to break down um, all the rides that I've done thus far, or really up to the point when the valve adjustment failed. And we're going to add up all the different rides that I've done, or all the different days that I've ridden the bike, and kind of see um, the type of riding that was done and what kind of what may have contributed the most to the valves uh, you know coming out of adjustment so quickly okay okay so I have my little note sheet here and I'm just gonna go over uh, what I've gathered so far um, in total from the first valve adjustment, we adjusted it on May 31st and started our first ride the day after. So pretty much the whole month of June up until the day when uh, I actually did the valve adjustment, which was on July 9th, that's in total 39 days. Now within all of those days, um, not every single day that I ride back and forth from work, obviously, um, but a lot of those days, whether it was on the weekend or during the week, I've actually divided it up 
I, I multiplied it by two because there were some days where I rode highway to work and then rode the back roads back home or vice versa. So it was 39 days, but I multiplied it by two. So in essence, it's 78 rides, right? And out of those 78 rides, uh, in total, nine of those rides were on the highway. Now, I also had to break that category down as well, because riding on the highway, I initially was only riding between 7,500 RPM and 8,200 RPMs. So this was an, a GPS 60 to 65. That riding at those speeds was giving me the best MPG performance. And this is what I talked about in my UET update number three, where I was stating I was getting about 50 to 51 MPG riding at those speeds at those RPMs. Okay. One of those rides was at between 9,000 RPMs and 10K RPMs. So one morning I decided to just give it full gas and see whether or not the bike could withhold uh, riding in red line um, to work and just give it a full gas. And it passed, it survived. Um, yeah, the remaining of that week and even the week after uh, didn't really have any issues. Then another ride, which was literally the same day, I, ra I rode to work between 9 and 10,000 RPMs. And then on the ride back, I rode closer to 9,000 RPMs. Didn't want to be in red line while it was like almost 100 degrees out. Just rode close to red line. <laughs> back home didn't want to push the bike too much but in total uh, out of all the rides that were done um, which were nine rides in total on the highway that accounts for 11 percent of the total riding that I've done on this bike all the other riding that I've done uh, since then or all the other riding that was done with the bike <laughs> Um, which is 89% of it was at 7,000 RPMs or below. So this is riding on the back roads at 7,000 RPMs and below, or even riding in city streets, uh, going back and forth from the grocery store, never really exceeding 50 miles an hour GPS. Um, so uh, the valve adjustment lasting only 1,644 miles. If we are going to say that it's because of highway riding, highway riding only accounts for 11% of my total rides. Um, and if we're going to say it's because of the highway pool or the one ride that was done on the highway all the way to work in red line that accounts for 1.2 percent of riding i will say however uh, when it comes to the valve adjustment or the valves coming out of spec so far the mpg loss was not so severe the the, uh, the overall power of the bike and how it performed it's still I mean it was still working it was still running decent it wasn't terrible um, so could I have gone longer maybe should I have gone longer probably not um, but either way the bike now uh, has 382 miles on its current valve adjustment and moving forward I'm going to focus more on uh, MPG performance and passing power because yes even though the bike top performance wise can get up to 80 miles an hour 
in all reality, in order for me to pass someone riding on the back roads, I don't need to reach 80. I, I mainly need to reach possibly 70 or may, um, yeah, pretty much 70 miles an hour to get past whoever it is I need to get past. Because if folks are riding slow on the back roads, it's mainly going to be trucks and they're riding around 50 miles an hour. I don't need to bl you know, blaze past them at 80. You know, and with this bike, by the time that I would reach 80, I mean, I'm, I'm way past the truck <laughs> within that time span. Anyway, this bike does not accelerate fast at all. So all I needed to do is to accelerate from 50 to 65 or to, to, to 70. And that's enough for me to do what I need to do to pass up folks on the back roads. So that's something moving forward that I'm going to be um, paying more close attention to uh, passing power and MPG performance and that is something I'm constantly monitoring and so far the best MPG performance I think I probably said it already but um, we've gotten 58.6 it's the best I've gotten so far the worst I've gotten so far was 54.6 and that's well between our 54 to 59 MPG range, depending on the type of riding that we do. And yeah. All right, guys. So this pretty much concludes this video. Um, I'm going to say when it comes to the UET test so far, I think my results are pretty conclusive. If you're going to be considering buying this bike as a commuter bike, depending on what your definition of commuting is, some of you have a really short commute. Some of you are probably not going to be riding that fast as, as I am shown in this clip here. Um, some of you may be even thinking about riding highway every single day. I'm not sure. But from my results so far when it comes to the UET test, if you're going to be riding this bike or plan to ride this bike every single day, um, the claimed... 5,000 mile valve adjustment interval riding at 8,000 RPMs I'm just going to go ahead and have to say it's false now can you get 5,000 miles per valve adjustment if you ride it occasionally maybe even ride it seasonally possibly so um, but as far as someone riding the bike every single day like I have shown within my test that is not the case. However, uh, this test is not over. Um, we're going to continue to monitor. We're going to continue to ride this bike and continue to document all of our maintenance and all of our uh, experiences that we have. Um, and we're going to see how far this bike can actually go. Maybe the valve adjustment clearances will improve as time go goes on. Maybe the valves will quote unquote settle in um, like a lot of other different owners have stated in the past or we'll just generally see whether or not the continued use or the consistent use of the bike is going to accelerate or uh, the deterioration of the motor we'll find out but anyways with that aside, um, I also wanted to announce I plan on making a 5,000 mile uh, maintenance video. I'm definitely at the end of this week going to be reaching 5,000 miles on the bike. So there's going to be a big video coming up this weekend where we're going to go through all the different maintenance items that are listed within the manual. Um, that are scheduled for the 5,000 mile maintenance interval. So stay tuned for that. Uh, and another thing that I wanted to do, this is probably gonna be uh, quite soon. Uh, I wanted to showcase a video or, or make a video showcasing uh, the importance of having upgraded lighting on your bike. In particular, when it comes to riding on the back roads like I am, uh, I just wanted to show how important it is to have upgraded lighting and to show the difference between the LED light and the floodlights and what effect it makes on riding 
in areas, as you can see here, um, where there's absolutely no street lights. So you'll get to see the difference between low beam, high beam, and my floodlights. And even though I have a LED headlight and it does a pretty good job at casting light, um, the floodlights just makes everything a whole lot better. So hopefully when I make that video, uh, it'll be able to showcase, um, you know, the differences uh, of how much the light actually makes. And so uh, hopefully that video comes out well, but yeah, so you guys stay tuned for that. Uh, look forward to that. And yeah, we'll just continue to um, document how uh, how this bike is doing and, you know, my ownership experience as time goes on. All right. Thanks, you guys, for watching. Until next time, guys. Peace out.